Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Space Cowboy Jason Jones coming to you live from an undisclosed location. This event is being regulated by Sports Slap USA under the direction of Becky Brown. Each fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. Officials for this contest are Kyron Bowen, Q Davidson, and Sammy Baines. Promoted and directed by JT Tilly, produced by Will Reed and Will Reed Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, Slap Fight Championship brings you rising! All right, Slap fans, it's that time again. From Louisville, Kentucky, we bring you our 19th underground slap fighting event, Rising, featuring one of the most interesting cards we have put together in years. We will begin our main card with a light heavyweight clash between Team Tank's Biscuit and Huntsville, Arkansas native, The Beast. Next, the return of Young Guns tournament champion, Monkey Wrench, as he takes on slap fight veteran, Achilles. The co-main event tonight features super fan turned professional slapper, the Bayou Bastard, in a battle with the original bad boy of slap fight, Rocky Moore. Shimok and Thunderclap and the Cannon return to the barrel in our main event to rematch their ill-fated slap fight at the 2022 Summer Smash. But first, our undercard, including a lightweight matchup between Team Destroyer's Raven and Team Cannon Slugger, Runt. We'll get started with a bad blood grudge match, however, between Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo. Retired mixed martial artist and Fulton, Missouri native Scrappy Doo impressed fight fans during his first appearance at Slap Fight Championship at the 2022 Summer Smash, facing Raven in a non tournament fight on the undercard. His opponent, Retired professional wrestler turned slap fighter, Maniac Matt, also debuted at Summer Smash, facing Team Cannon's Runt in a seven round tournament matchup that ended with Maniac Matt winning a controversial split decision. Tonight, Indianapolis based Maniac Matt faces Fulton, Missouri's Scrappy Doo in a bad blood grudge match at Slap Fight Rising. This first fight is a bad blood grudge match. Introducing first, coming to the barrel, from Fulton, Missouri, Scrappy Doo. And his opponent making his way to the barrel from Indianapolis, Indiana, Maniac Matt! Good evening, fight fans, and welcome to Slap Fight Championship Rising. My name is JT Tilly, and I could not be more excited about this bad blood grudge match between Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo. As always, our lead official this evening will be professional fighter Kyron Bowen, and as he explains the rules to our competitors, let's go down to the barrel for the coin toss. Yeah. Scrappy Doo wins the coin toss. He will slap first. And as the corner man get our competitors ready, let's explore some of the regulations of the game. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. Looks like Scrappy Doo is eager to get this fight underway. He's checking his placement. And here's the windup. And just like that, this bad blood grudge match is underway. Scrappy Doo with a nice clean shot. Maniac Matt eats it and steps right back to the barrel.
Now Matt's going to line up his shot and return fire at the bottom of round one. And a solid shot from Matt. Scrappy Dude takes it and steps right back to the barrel. Moving into round two. You'll notice Scrappy Doo is using an interesting new technique One, here. Two, three, and it seems to be working out nicely for him. That's another clean shot from Scrappy Doo. We do know that Maniac Matt has a solid chin. We also know that he is capable of generating big power. He's going to readjust his footing here. Check his placement again, and here we go. Round two. One, two oh, a big shot from Matt. You can see on Scrappy Doo's face that that's stung. He's going to take a little time here. Matt steps right back to the barrel. Scrappy Doo's going to take a breather here. And he's going to step right back into the Thunderdome. Top of round three. One, winding up. That's an interesting new technique. I know that technique was developed by uh, Scrappy Doo's uh, teammate, Biscuit. I don't know what they're calling it, but so far it looks effective. Yeah. Lead official Kyron Bowen just had a conversation with Maniac Matty, told him to watch his head movement. I don't think that's an official warning, uh, but he did caution him to watch his head movement there. One, Bottom of round three. Two. And Matt lands another slap. And then Scrappy Doo lands two on the barrel. Those were probably the two biggest slaps of the fight so far. Winding up in round four. Just a slight movement there from Maniac Matt. I don't know. I, I think Kyron Bowen's taking a close look at that. The rules of slap fight do say that the small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike One, is a foul. So we're going to have to watch that movement. Three, In the meantime, Matt lands another big shot on Scrappy Doo. There's a very serious tone to this fight. You can tell by looking at the faces of these two competitors that there is no love lost between them. This is absolutely a bad blood grudge match. One, two, Look at the face. Three, hmm. A little bit of movement there by Maniac Matt. It, it almost looked like that could have been a violation, and it looks like they may issue a warning here. Yes, Maniac Matt is going to receive a warning here for flinching. Obviously, that's accidental, but I think what's happening is he's looking up as he's moving with the slap, and the blows are just glancing off of his forehead. Okay, not a bad slap there. He's in it still. Scrappy Doo's going to have a quick conversation with his corner man, step right back to the barrel. This is a fast-paced fight. I'm not quite sure who'd be winning on the scorecards. It's pretty even. And a good shot by Scrappy. Look at the face of Scrappy Doo. Lots of intensity. Probably easy to slap. Maniac Matt winding up at the bottom of the sixth round. A little bit of suspect movement there by Scrappy. Looks like they're going to let it slide. Rolling into round seven of a scheduled 10 round fight. One, Scrappy Doo winding up. Two, three. Whoa. 
Each one of our competitors has a 60-second break available to them between slaps so that they can clear the cobwebs and step back to the barrel. So far in this fight, neither of the competitors have needed much of a break. One, two, three. Oh, another big shot from Maniac Matt. Another conversation with the corner man here for Scrappy Doo. I can't imagine he would throw in the towel here. Okay, no, he's back. Scrappy's going to stick with that new technique here. Round eight. One, two, three. Nice slap. Darius the Destroyer, undisputed heavyweight champion in the corner of Maniac Matt. Very, very close fight. Very interesting matchup. Maniac Matt has a slight weight advantage. Scrappy Doo has a height advantage. One, Round eight. Two, three. Oh, that's the biggest shot of the match so far. Scrappy Doo pissed at the barrel. Getting closer to the end of the fight here. We are in round nine. Here's the windup. Oh, and another one of those slaps that just kind of glance off the forehead. Uh, looks like they're going to have a conversation here. They're, they, okay, yes, they're going to issue a penalty here. Looks like Maniac Matt has had his second violation for flinching, and now he will lose his ninth round slap. Maniac Matt has flinched twice. He's been called twice. And so now it looks like he's going to take a hit here on the judges' scorecards and lose a turn. That means we're going directly to round 10. Scrappy Doo smells blood in the water. And here we go. Not bad. I think Matt realizes he's lost this fight. This is his last slap. He's got to put everything he's got into this slap. He needs a knockout to win, I would imagine. Let's see what he's got. One, two, three. Not a bad slap. I just don't know if that's going to be enough. That's 10 rounds between Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo. Not a bad little fight for the undercard, but we're going to have to go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. And as the judges deliberate, you can look at the faces of the competitors and you can see the story of the match. Scrappy-Doo wants a little bit more. Maniac Matt with an olive branch there. And ladies and gentlemen, your winner by split decision. Scrappy-Doo.
I was really nervous uh, about my fight uh, with the weight difference. Um, after coming to realize I do have a uh, reach advantage, uh, taking the first lap, I knew what I was in for. Um, penalties uh, were in my favor, and uh, I'm ready to come back for another one. Missouri native and team destroyer lightweight, Raven, put the division on notice at the Summer Smash this year, knocking out his opponent in less than four rounds and announcing his arrival at Slap Fight Championship. His 5'11 frame allows Raven well over 180 degrees of rotation, giving this lanky lightweight a similar striking style to light heavyweight GOAT, Wolverine. The career martial artist and training partner of heavyweight champion Darius the Destroyer has joined us this weekend in Louisville, Kentucky to continue his quest to test himself at the Slap Fight Barrel. His opponent, Tennessee native and team cannon slapper Runt, suffered a split decision loss in his debut, and he has returned to Slap Fight Championship to make a statement at Rising. Up next, Team Cannon's Runt takes on Team Destroyer's Raven. The following match is a lightweight contest scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, from Kodiak, Tennessee, Runt! And introducing his opponent, making his way to the barrel from Rockaway Beach, Missouri, Raven! And here we are back at the barrel for the second undercard fight from Slap Fight Championship Rising. On the right side of your screen, you see Team Cannon's Runt. And on the left side of your screen, from Team Destroyer, Raven. As lead official Kyron Bowen goes over the rules with our competitors, let's go down to the barrel for the coin toss. Runt wins the coin toss. He will slap first. Very excited about this matchup. Two very evenly matched opponents. Runt's going to check his placement here in round one. One, two, three. Oh, a bomb landed by Runt in round one. Raven swallows it, steps right back to the barrel. He's going to check his placement here. It looks like the officials are trying to get his attention here. And yes, they're gonna issue a warning for flinching in round one. That's one warning for Raven. One, Here we go, two, round one. Three, oh, a big shot by Raven. Runt staggers back. Little show of sportsmanship here, but oh my. We are at the top of round two. Both of these fighters have landed a huge blow on the other, and we are still at the barrel. No break. One, Another fantastic slap. Holy smokes, Raven steps back to the barrel. Take a look at Raven with the windup. And another big shot, that was a bit low. And it looks like Raven's gonna be called another warning, this one for clubbing. So if you're keeping score, that's one, one warning for clubbing, one warning for flinching. If Raven violates again, he will lose a turn. Here we go with the top of round three. One, Here's Runt with the windup. Oh. 
And another fantastic slap by Runt. Wow. Bottom around three, Raven. Another fantastic slap. Runt staggers back just a little bit. Oh my. You could tell by the look on his face that that one definitely hurt. Runt's gonna return fire here. Top of round four. Here's the wind up. And another fantastic bomb by Runt. These two young fighters are throwing some heavy, heavy blows tonight. Cotton ball. Oh, lost my cotton ball. Each one of our competitors wears a cotton ball in their ear to protect their eardrums from damage. Replace the cotton ball quickly here for Raven and right back to round four. Look at the rotation. Another fantastic slap. One of the things you'll notice about Raven is that he gets over 180 degrees of rotation in his slaps. One, two, three. And oh my gosh, Runt with another big bomb. This is a very even matchup so far. I wouldn't even know who would be the favorite in this fight, and I definitely wouldn't know who would be ahead on the judges' scorecards currently. Look at the rotation here by Raven. Oh! Raven sends Runt back a couple of feet. Runt takes a second here to clear the cobwebs. You can see it on his face. That was a stinger. He's going to have a conversation with his corner man here. The cannon in the corner of Runt. Darius the Destroyer, heavyweight champion in the corner of Raven. Runt's going to have a quick conversation here with his corner and then step back to the barrel. And this fight's going to continue. Siding in here, round six. One, two, three. Another fantastic slap by Runt. I am seeing some huge improvement here, both of these fighters. We're looking at the future of the lightweight division right here. Look at the rotation with Raven. Oh! Raven staggers Run, almost drops him. Runs in trouble. He's talking to the lead official. Staggers back to the corner. That was a hard slap. This might be the end of the match. A little bit of blood trickling from the corner of the mouth of Raven. Runs having a conversation with the lead official and his corner man. Quite a bit of blood coming out of the mouth of Raven. He just uh, wiped it off with his towel. It looks like he's trying to conceal something. I don't think he wants the officials to see the blood in his mouth. And it looks like this fight is over. Runt has tapped out. Raven is going to win this one in the sixth round by TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Raven.
Yeah, I came in here. There's a little bit of a size difference, which made it fun, but I made sure to come in and go all in. I've been training for this at our gym uh, with Storm MMA. So that's what we're here for, slapping. Well, fight fans, that does it for our undercard. Kicking off our main card this evening, a heavyweight showdown between The Beast and Biscuit. Huntsville, Arkansas native The Beast made his slap fight debut during the Armageddon Super Heavyweight Tournament earlier this season, where he served as an alternate, making his entrance in the semifinals and losing to eventual tournament winner, The Hulk. Biscuit, the light heavyweight prodigy of Frank the Tank, announced his arrival in a brutal contest with the Aloha Samurai. After taking several illegal strikes and overcoming tremendous adversity, the Fulton, Missouri slapper walked away with a unanimous decision win. This quirky light heavyweight showed incredible resilience and quickly became a fan favorite. Tonight, he leads off the main card versus the Beast. Your first matchup on our main card is a heavyweight contest scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, from Huntsville, Arkansas, this is The Beast! And his opponent, Making his way to the barrel from Fulton, Missouri, Biscuit! Biscuit making his way to the competition area now. Interesting character, Biscuit. He trains in Fulton, Missouri with legendary slapper Frank the Tank. His opponent, the Beast, is an independent slapper from Huntsville, Arkansas. This is a heavyweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds. There will be no coin toss for this fight, and that is because the Beast failed to make his weight requirement for the match. Anytime a competitor misses weight at Slap Fight Championship, they immediately sacrifice the first slap. So that's going to be a big advantage for Biscuit. The Beast made his debut at Slap Fight Championship earlier this year during the Armageddon Tournament. Biscuit made his first appearance during the Slap Fight Summer Smash. This is the second appearance for both fighters. Final swigs of water, let's measure up. Your first. Okay, we're going to get this fight underway. Biscuit checking his placement. And here we go, round one. Okay, Biscuit's going to try the new technique we saw earlier tonight. And it works out nicely for him. I was sent a video a few days ago by Biscuit asking if that technique would be legal, and it is absolutely legal, and it looks to be quite effective. Let's go! The Beast is going to return fire here. It looks like the Beast is going to try that same technique. Two, three, four. Okay, not bad. That's good. It happens all the time. Turns out the lights on Biscuit for a few seconds. We're going to move right into round two here. No break. Here's your wind-up. One, two, three. Oh, it looked like a little bit of a flinch there from the Beast. And they're going to call it. That's going to be a flinch warning for the Beast. If he flinches one more time during this match, he will lose a turn. The Beast is going to stick with that new technique. Here we go. Not bad at all. Great placement on that slap. Good power. Looks like we've got a little bit of a fight on our hands here. 
Likewise, if there's both sides, let's get them on the cheek. On the cheek. All right, got these bottom fingers down. Okay, our lead officials telling him to keep their strikes up just a little bit higher. Okay, Biscuit's going to check his placement here. One, Here's your wind up, the top two, of round three. three oh. Okay, not a bad slap. Uh, there was a little bit of movement there. One more flinching. Okay, now that's not good. It looks like the Beast is going to be charged with a flinching penalty, and he will now lose his round three slap. Got here we go. I've got a stepping warning. Oh, I've got a stepping warning on Biscuit. Okay, line official Q Davidson is going to issue a warning for stepping for Biscuit. So if you're keeping score, we've got a penalty for flinching for the Beast One, and a stepping warning two, for Biscuit. Three, and we're right back to the barrel here. Biscuit with another great slap. Right there. All right, here we go. The Beast with a wind-up. Not a bad slap by the Beast. Not necessarily a good slap, but uh, definitely made contact and scored a point. We are in round five now, the beginning of round five. Biscuit is just a silly dude. Fantastic slap, perfect placement. Yeah, they're, they should look about to hold on to your arms. Right? Okay, I'm not so sure that the Beast realizes that the uh, that the technique he's using was was <laughs> created by Biscuit. Uh, it might be interesting for him after the fight to realize that Biscuit's been training that technique for about a month. Okay, it looks like we're having a quick conversation here about flinching. I didn't notice any flinching by Biscuit, but it looks like we're uh, we're giving him sort of a gentle warning here. Two, three. Uh, that definitely looked like a flinch, and they're going to call it. That's going to be a warning for flinching. Oh, and they're going to issue a warning for stepping for the Beast. If you look at the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see that step. That makes this kind of an interesting fight here. We are halfway through a 10 round fight. We've got a flinching penalty from the beast. We've got a warning for stepping for the beast, a warning for stepping for Biscuit, and also a flinch warning for Biscuit. Getting a little bit messy here, but so far a pretty even matchup. This is round six. And another decent slap. Biscuit's starting to find his target here. The Beast checks his placement. Sticking with the new technique. And again, another decent slap. Now, I don't know what they call this new technique, but it, it does look like it's somewhat effective for some of these guys. Round seven. Very nice. You can tell that one bothered the beast. Yeah, I'm good. A little bit of, little bit of swelling. I believe Biscuit just asked him if he needed a kiss. I tell you, Biscuit is just really a goofy dude. All right, we're getting right back to it. The beast with the wind up at the bottom of round seven. Okay, he's going to correct his form. And One, here's your wind up. Two, three. Oh, fantastic oh. slap from the beast. Yeah. Woo. You all right? I'm good. Who said that? No. <laughs> the biscuit eats that slap. He's going to step right back to the barrel. Two, two tough guys here. These guys are taking some big, big shots, making some smart ass <laughs> comments. This is a good time. These guys are having fun. I would have to say, Biscuit does look like he's getting the better of the exchanges here. Still a pretty close fight. 
The Beast winding One, up, round eight. Two, two. Oh, a big shot by The Beast. Okay, we may have a problem here. It looks like line, line official Q Davidson has called a stepping violation on The Beast. That's going to be his second stepping violation. So he will now lose his, his round nine slap. That's going to make a big, big difference here in the judges' scorecards. One, Round nine. Two, three, Biscuit four, lands another three, quality three, slap. One, and two, round ten. Biscuit, three, another four, good slap. Three, four, three. The Beast has one slap remaining. I would have to say this one, is probably the most important two, slap for him. Three, oh. Not bad, but probably not enough. That was a fantastic fight. A heavyweight battle between Biscuit of Team Tank and the Beast of Huntsville, Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, yeah! Biscuit. Uh, I had a good time seeing it was smacking and yeah, I was getting hit and it hurt and it was fun and we could do it again and yeah, I'm looking forward to the next thing and yeah. In our featured fight, slap fight veteran Achilles returns to face newcomer Monkey Wrench. Competitive power lifter Achilles debuted at the barrel during the adrenaline tournament, hoping his superior strength and competitive nature would bring home the championship until he faced retired MMA fighter Coach Killa in the semifinals. The two went toe-to-toe -to -toe for several rounds before Achilles fell short and lost to the eventual champion by knockout. Team Cannon's Monkey Wrench impressed the fans during the Young Guns tournament at the Slap Fight Summer Smash earlier this year. He gave incredible performances versus both the Country Clown and Karma. His fight with Achilles, however, will be a big step up in competition for the hard-nosed newcomer. The following contest is a middleweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, from Branson, Missouri, Achilles! Introducing his opponent making his way to the barrel from Sevierville, Tennessee, Monkey Ranch. All right, fight fans, this is our featured fight of the evening. Veteran slapper Achilles taking on newcomer and Young Guns tournament champion, Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench out of Tennessee, training with Team Cannon. Achilles is a competitive power lifter from Branson, Missouri. As our lead official, Kyron Bowen, goes over the rules and regulations with our slappers, we're going to make our way down to the barrel and join them for the coin toss. And 
and it looks like Achilles has won the coin toss, and he will slap first. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. Here we are back at the barrel for our featured fight. Achilles looks ready to get this fight underway. Achilles is one of the strongest competitors in the middleweight division. He's been away from the sport for about a year. And he's been anxious to return. Oh no. Okay, right away we've got a horrible clubbing by Achilles. And the officials are gonna call the penalty right away. Anytime there's a clubbing penalty at the beginning of a match, the offended player has the opportunity to take a 15 to 20 minute recovery break. And it looks like Monkey Wrench is considering that now. And he's gonna tell lead official Kyron Bowen that he doesn't need the break. Sports Lap officials have decided to forego the warning and they're going to go ahead and issue a penalty right away. So that means that Achilles will now lose his second round slap. So what you're gonna see now is Monkey Wrench is going to receive two slaps in a row, his round one slap and his round two slap. That's not a great way to start the match for Achilles, but we'll see how this goes. Monkey Wrench checks his placement. Here's the wind up. Two, three. Oh, a big shot from Monkey Wrench staggers Achilles. You can take a look at Achilles' face and you can see that now he knows what he's dealing with. We saw during the, uh, the Summer Smash event, during the Young Guns tournament, Monkey Wrench has deceptive power, but also Monkey Wrench is one of the cleanest slappers in the entire league. I believe he's gone 14 or 15 rounds now without receiving a single penalty, and that's impressive. Achilles just gonna make sure his neck and, and uh, chin are still functioning properly. He's asking the lead official, Kyron Bowen, to let him know when the 60-second break is up. Each one of our competitors has a 60-second break available to them after receiving a slap to clear their cobwebs and return to the barrel. Achilles is making a comment about the size of monkey wrench hands. Uh, we measured everyone's hand size at the weigh-ins last night, and Monkey Wrench has the second largest hands in the show, second only to Shemokin Thunderclap. Monkey Wrench winding up. One, Round two. Two, three. Oh, and another big bomb from Monkey Wrench. Achilles is going to take a walk here and think about this. Okay, Achilles has survived those first two slaps and now he will step back to the barrel. The beginning of round three, Achilles has a, a chance to land a clean slap here. He definitely felt those two slaps. He's taken full advantage of his 60 second break. And I have faith that he will step back to the barrel. Achilles is an interesting character He's got deceptive power, very friendly guy, but uh, he, he doesn't mind slapping the piss out of you. And it looks like that's his plan here in round three. One of the things I love about Slap Fight Championship is the camaraderie and the respect between opponents. And you can see that at play here now. Achilles gonna line up his shot here. Oh no, and we've got another fumble here. Achilles with another club. That's gonna be another penalty, and now Achilles will lose his fourth round slap. And what that means is now Monkey Wrench will receive his third and fourth round slap in a row. That's a tough break for Achilles. Achilles does have a great chin. Uh, he went toe to toe with Coach Killa last year, and uh, we, we saw that chin on display. However, too many clubbing penalties, and he's going to be taking quite a few shots from Monkey Wrench. He's really going to have to pull that together here. 
You can already see the left side of Achilles' face is starting to swell. There's a little bit of an abrasion there. He's taken two big shots, and here comes a third. Both of these fighters are southpaw. Oh, my gosh, and another big slap from Monkey Wrench. Achilles is thinking about it, reliving the memory for a moment. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to have a warning here for flinching. Achilles now has two clubbing penalties and a warning for flinching. So he's going to have to clean this up here or he's going to have a hard time winning. I would imagine at this point in the contest, Achilles realizes he's going to need a knockout to win. Achilles has lost his fourth round slap due to penalty. So we are now in the bottom of the fourth. Monkey Wrench is checking his placement. Here's the wind up. Oh, another bomb from Monkey Wrench. Achilles takes another walk. Monkey Wrench just kind of standing at the barrel like, what did I do? Holy smokes. This might be the end of the matchup. It looks like Achilles is feeling these slaps. Let's listen in. Tough, tough guy, Achilles. Okay, looks like he's going to step back to the barrel here. We are in round five. That means Achilles does have a slap due. Taking a quick inventory here, making sure all of his joints work. Still breathing, right? Still breathing, he says. My bad. All right, here we go. We are in the top of round five. Monkey Wrench has landed four incredible clean slot shots. Achilles has now suffered a warning and two penalties. Let's see if he can land this round five slap without a penalty here. Here we go. Quick dance break. Okay, and he does it. Achilles scores a point. And he looks just as shocked as we are. Very good. Here we are halfway through the match, and Achilles scores his first point. Not a bad slap at all. Now we go to the other side of the barrel, and Monkey Wrench is going to check his placement. This is the bottom of round five. Monkey Wrench, one of the most clean slaps in the game. One of the most clean slappers in the league. Here we go. One, Number five. Two, three. Oh, and another big walk for Achilles. I wouldn't be surprised if he just kept walking and went right on out the back door. Achilles is a tough, tough guy. But sometimes in the slap fight game, it's not about the blunt force trauma. There are times when it's just about the sting. Achilles just looked out into the crowd and said, think about your decisions, kids. I don't know if I can hear anything right now. Okay, we may be at the end of the match here. Achilles has taken a, a lot of pretty hard shots here. He's, he's thinking about it. I think he may withdraw here. We're going to listen in. Why not, right? Okay, he's stepping right back into the Thunderdome. Here we go. Round six, the beginning of round six. Let's see if Achilles can land another quality slap. He's going to check his placement here. Very friendly guy, Monkey Wrench. Oh, no. It almost looked like another club. Oh, my gosh. We've got another clubbing penalty uh, for Achilles here. He looks uh, dumbfounded by this. That is the third clubbing penalty. And what that means is that Achilles will now lose another turn. He will not have a seventh round slap. At this point, Monkey Wrench has landed six bombs on Achilles. Achilles has landed one slap, and he's had four violations. 
Again, I can tell you that Achilles is not a dirty fighter. He's been out of the game for about a year, and it looks like he's just having a difficult time pulling it together. Monkey Wrench takes a deep breath, checks his placement again. One, Here's the wind up. Two, three. Oh! Holy smokes, Achilles takes another big shot from Monkey Wrench, stays on his feet. I'm just not so sure he's going to continue to compete here. This is round seven. He has taken six monster slaps. I can see it in his eyes that he's thinking about withdrawing. That must feel absolutely horrible. Monkey Wrench has yet to leave the barrel. Achilles says, where's the knockout when I need it? And I want to make sure that everybody understands that at any point, Achilles has enough power to end this fight with a knockout. We have not seen Monkey Wrench knocked down or even dazed in any of his fights so far. But if there was anyone to do it, it could be Achilles. Round seven. Oh, another hard shot. Oh, uh, Monkey Wrench just told the official he thinks that was high. Okay, uh, what's just happened here is Monkey Wrench has called his own warning for clubbing. Achilles is having a difficult time here. My brain felt that. Oh, no, dude. Monkey Wrench says, I'm sorry. The other ones were good also. That one, I didn't even know it was a club. Okay. Achilles is definitely not short on personality, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to stay here at the barrel and take this punishment. I would like to point out that Monkey Wrench has gone 20-some rounds in his career without ever having a penalty. This is his first warning, and he called it on himself. Interesting character here, Monkey Wrench. Achilles looks like he's going to step back to the barrel and compete some more. You are a bad influence there, sir. Okay, Achilles is having a conversation with somebody in the crowd. Okay, and at this point, I would think that the uh, the crowd tonight, that we've got about 25 fans here. Uh, we are in an undisclosed location, so uh, we don't allow ticket sales or, or fans or uh, recording or photographs. Uh, but the guys that are here at this point, I believe they're just cheering so they can see how much damage that Achilles is willing to take. At this point, he has lost his fight. Okay, not a bad slap. Achilles scores another point. The only way he will be able to win this fight is if he were to drop Monkey Wrench in the next two slaps without a penalty. I'm sure that he knows that. It's a, it's a difficult proposition for him, but, but I hope he stays in for the entire 10 rounds. Monkey Wrench, big left hand. Here's your wind up. And another big shot from Monkey Wrench. At this point, Monkey Wrench is basically pistol whipping Achilles, and I feel that Achilles is looking for a way out, but he's just too much of a manly man to tap. In the corner of Monkey Wrench is his coach, Cannon. Cannon has two fighters on the card tonight, plus himself in the main event. So far, Team Cannon is putting on a show tonight at Slap Fight Rising. Achilles is taking a beating, but he's going to step back to the barrel. We are in round nine. Achilles is going to go ahead and check his placement. This is his round nine slap. Another great slap by Achilles. Not doing a lot of damage to Monkey Wrench, but it is good to see him scoring some points here. One, Monkey Wrench two, with the wind up, round nine. Three, and another four, bomb from Monkey Wrench. Holy yeah. smokes. Wow.
Achilles has not had a great day today. It's been a difficult competition for him. He has received some incredible hard slaps. He's had eight or nine big shots to the right side of his face. By my recollection, so far he's landed two or three slaps. Monkey wrench, eight or nine slaps. It's almost a lost cause. I would expect that Achilles will put everything he has in this next slap. The crowd very supportive of Achilles. This is the top of round 10. Achilles is going to put everything he has into this slap. Here we go. Okay, that's a clean slap. The power seems to have diminished just a little bit here. And this is going to be a win for Monkey Wrench. He's going to put a big exclamation point here on the end of this fight. And I have to say that is one of the more impressive performances of the night. Monkey Wrench really putting on a show tonight. One of the top new talents at Slap Fight Championship. Here we go. Last slap of the match. Oh! And he sends Achilles running for the door. Achilles has made it all 10 rounds. Fantastic performance by Monkey Ranch and incredible resilience by Achilles. That was a fantastic fight, but your winner clearly, unanimous decision, Monkey Ranch. It was great, went into it knowing that I had a challenge. Uh, Achilles hits hard for sure, and I'm glad I got the win, but I definitely give him props. The Bayou Bastard entered the slap fight ranks when he signed up to compete in the Adrenaline Tournament as a super fan, defeating Lead Belt Chapman by decision. He went on to face Big Gulp and Battle Axe in the Titans Clash and Redemption pay-per-view events before requesting promoters give him a top 10 ranked opponent. At Armageddon, Ricky faced number nine ranked Baby Ray. The former superfan stepped up to the barrel a fifth time again as an underdog, facing a retired MMA fighter with heavy hands and loads of combat sports experience. Ricky showed vast improvement, chopping down the much larger opponent methodically for 10 rounds to win a unanimous decision. Ricky shocked the fans that night and immediately began asking for another crack at a top 10 opponent. At Undisputed, he dispatched number eight ranked Young James, finally landing himself in the top 10. But now, Ricky faces his toughest opponent yet. 
Hey guys, it's Ricky, also known as the Bayou Bastard, original super fan turned pro slapper, and I'm here to commit some violence. His opponent will be the original bad boy of Slap Fight Championship, Rocky Moore. Rocky joined Slap Fight during our second event where he lost a split decision to then champion Young James. At Slap Fight 3, he battled with newcomer Wolverine for seven rounds during the heavyweight tournament, giving the growing fan base a look at these two future titans of Slap, but falling short again, losing to the future GOAT by decision. Rocky took a short break from competition until the Slap Fight Adrenaline Tournament, where he faced the eventual middleweight champion in the quarterfinals. Coach Killa and Rocky went head to head in a spirited clash, which nearly ended in a disqualification, but instead saw the Arkansas native pull out a split decision victory. Rocky has been out of commission for the past two seasons, but he has returned and wants to steal Ricky's momentum at Slap Fight Championship. Rocky, and I'm back. I'm ready to state my claim. As one of the pioneers of slap fight, I'm gonna slap the out of somebody. The Bayou Bastard versus Rocky Moore. Who will win this David and Goliath matchup? The co-main event of Slap Fight Championship Rising. Your co-main event for the evening is a heavyweight contest scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first. From Atkins, Arkansas, making his way to the barrel, Rocky Moore! And introducing his opponent, from Terrytown, Louisiana, you know him as Ricky. This is the Bayou Bastard. Here we are, fight fans, with our co-main event, the Bayou Bastard versus Rocky Moore. It's the original bad boy of Slap Fight Championship versus the super fan turned pro slapper. And I cannot wait to see how this goes down. Lead official Kyron Bowen's gonna go over a quick rules meeting with the competitors. And I would like to share with you that there will be no coin toss for this fight tonight. And the reason is Rocky Moore did not make weight for the event. Anytime a competitor does not make weight at Slap Fight Championship, they sacrifice the first slap of the match. So that means Ricky will have the first slap tonight. Each one of our competitors wears a cotton ball in their ear to protect their eardrums from damage. And it looks like our competitors are ready. And we're going to get this co-main event started. Here we go. Ricky checks his placement. And here's your wind up. Ricky was kind of a funky wind up here. Oh, and he catches the tip of Rocky Moore's nose. Not a great slap, but at least it wasn't a violation. Rocky Moore didn't appreciate that. Getting slapped in the tip of the nose is never fun. Two, three. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we've got two violations here, it seems. Uh, Ricky is uh, going to be issued a flinch warning, and that flinch... Uh, sort of instigated the clubbing warning that Rocky has received. Now that was also an illegal strike from Rocky. So one warning for flinching, one warning for Rocky for clubbing. One, Round two. Two. Three. Oh. Okay, not a bad slap, not a lot of power, but at least it's on the money. Uh, sometimes it takes Ricky just a few rounds to get started. And I think this time we should just be thankful that he's not pulling in a lot of violations here. Rocky's having a hard time uh, getting started. Bottom of round two. Rocky's going to wind up here. Two, three, oh. Okay, now that was a good slap, but I did see some movement here with the feet, and it looks like line official Hugh Davidson is going to give him a warning for stepping. And one of the things I've noticed here is that Rocky has chosen to wear some big red tennis shoes today. Makes it very easy to see the stepping violation. One, two, 
Two. Round three. three. Okay, Ricky has found his mark. We are in round three, and Ricky is on the money. Rocky Moore checking his placement. Neither of these competitors seems to need a break. One, two, three. Oh, Rocky Moore with a bomb in round three. And as always, Ricky eats it and steps right back to the barrel. Holy smokes. Top of round four. Ricky with that funky windup again. Two, three. Oh, and Ricky with a big shot. Holy smokes. Oh, something's going on here with Rocky. He's going to talk to us. Oh, I just saw it. Oh, wow. Okay, I don't know if they're going to show it here, but I just watched Rocky walk over to his corner, man, and he has dumped two teeth out of his mouthpiece into the towel of his corner, man. Wow. Ricky's waiting at the barrel. I would imagine losing a couple of teeth would not stop Rocky Moore. Yes, he's going to step right back to the barrel here. Bottom of round One, four. Two, here we go. Three. Oh, another shot by Rocky. <laughs> Sends Ricky back a couple of feet. But Ricky's right back to it. Rocky staring Ricky right in the eyes. One, not intimidated at all. Two, Oh, that's, that's not a great strike there. A little bit high. And they're going to hit Ricky with a warning for clubbing. That's one warning for clubbing. If Ricky clubs again, he will lose a turn. Very close fight. Rocky Moore, round five. And another big shot from Rocky Moore. Holy smokes. At this point in the match, it's a very even match, but Rocky is definitely landing more power shots. Unfortunately, he also has more violations. Two. Round six. Winding up. And Ricky with another great slap. This is anybody's match. Rocky's winding up. Round six. And another great slap by Rocky. Immediately, we've got a flag here. Line official Q Davidson is going to issue a stepping violation. That's the second stepping penalty for Rocky Moore. You can see up in the top right-hand corner of your screen. And those giant red shoes are not working out for him. He now will lose a turn. He will lose his round seven slap. That means Ricky will now slap twice in a row. One, this may have turned the tide of the match here. Two, three. Okay, Ricky with a solid strike. No break for Rocky. This is round eight. One, two, three. And Ricky scores another point. Fantastic fight so far. Anybody's match. One, round eight with Rocky. Oh, and another power shot from Rocky Moore. If you're keeping score, that's four power shots for Rocky Moore, two power shots for the Bayou Bastard. Unfortunately, we have kind of a lot of penalties on the side of Rocky. I'm looking here and I'm counting four penalties so far. By you bastard with one. Two, three. And another great slap from Ricky. Wow. We are now in the bottom of round nine. Two, three. Oh, a big shot from Rocky. Holy smokes. Oh, no, this is not good. Rocky has just received another stepping violation, and he is now going to lose his round 10 slap. That very well may turn the tide of the fight. It's a big opportunity for Ricky. Ricky has found himself in this predicament several times this year. Very close fights coming down to the last slap or the last two slaps of the match. He needs to land this one flush. Here we go. And a clean slap from Ricky, and that puts this in the judges' hands. What a difficult decision for our judges tonight. The Bayou Bastard and Rocky Moore, incredible performances. Uh, Rocky's about to take a last slap here, but he has forgotten he lost that last slap due to penalty. And that's going to be the match, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go right to the judges' scorecards here. Fantastic fight. 
I have no idea who has won this fight. Looking at the scorecards here, we've got Rocky Moore. He's got two penalties for stepping. He's got a warning for clubbing and a warning for stepping. On the other side of the barrel, the Bayou Bastard has one warning for clubbing. Rocky may have done enough to win this fight. He landed four power shots during the match. The Bayou Bastard, only two. Wow. This is going to be a razor thin split decision. They have asked lead official Kyron Bowen and line official Q Davidson to join the judges to deliberate. I can already tell you I wouldn't mind seeing this match again. It's great to have Rocky Moore back at Slap Fight Championship. If he wins this match, he wants another shot at light heavyweight champion Wolverine. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the Bayou Bastard. Wow. Unbelievable performance by both competitors. Holy smokes, what a match. Yeah, I didn't expect it. He hit harder than I saw in the video, so he showed me. I'll tell him that much. And, you know, I really wanted to keep flinching to a minimum. I feel like I accomplished that. You know, I didn't like what I was doing in the Young James fight, in the Black Lung fight, so I had to work on that, and I feel like I've done that. And I want to say thank all y'all for the support in the comments, on Facebook and on YouTube, everywhere. It's been crazy, even though I started off shit. Y'all actually stuck with me, and then look how it turned out. Hey man, that shit right there is one-off penalties. Ricky, Cajun Bastard, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself, come back to this right here. I got you again. In our main event, Shemokin Thunderclap battles the cannon at middleweight. Pennsylvania native and proud U.S. Marine, Shemokin Thunderclap, made his first appearance at Slap Fight Championship during the quarterfinals of the Redemption Tournament, where he demolished the Butcher in three rounds to advance. He returned at Armageddon to humiliate the Guardian with one slap using his iron palm technique and cementing himself as one of the rising stars of the middleweight division. With his sights set on the middleweight title, he is looking to make a statement at Slap Fight Rising. Hi, I'm the Shemokin Thunderclap out of Shemokin, Pennsylvania. I'm here to kick ass and take names because blood makes the green grass grow. 
His opponent will be fan favorite, The Cannon. The Tennessee native made his debut versus slap fight veteran Battle Axe earlier this year in a frustrating match that saw the crafty veteran use every advantage he could gain to walk away with a split decision victory. The fans were furious with the commission and slap fight promoters decided to award the cannon with a top contenders fight versus Shemokin Thunderclap, a fight originally intended for Battle Axe. Thunderclap and the Cannon met at the barrel during the 2022 Summer Smash, and after winning the coin toss, Shemokin Thunderclap used his iron palm to vaporize one of the Cannon's wisdom teeth. As the medical team examined the damage, the replay determined that the offending strike was a clubbing violation, and slap fight officials decided to rule the bout a no contest. My name's The Cannon, fighting out of Newmarket, Tennessee. This is my third time at Slap Fight, and I'm ready for my rematch. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event is a middleweight contest, scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, from Sevierville, Tennessee, this is The Cannon! From Shemokin, by way of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Shemokin, Thunder Clap! Here we go, fight fans. It is time for our main event, Shemokin Thunderclap versus the cannon. Heads Heads. Shimokin calls the coin toss. And he will slap first. These two competitors have unfinished business. They met at the barrel during the summer smash just a few months ago. And during the first slap of the match, Shimokin Thunderclap landed an illegal strike and completely removed the wisdom tooth of the cannon. We immediately rebook the match, and these two gentlemen cannot wait to get this match started. So here we go. It's round one. The Pennsylvania native one, siding in. Two, three, oh, a big four, shot from Shemokin Thunderclap. Three, Holy smokes. Three, the cannon felt that. This answers a lot of questions for us. Many people said that the cannon would not be able to accept the power of Shemokin Thunderclap. We're going to find out right now if he's willing to step back to the barrel and compete. Shemokin Thunderclap, a very dangerous man, proud U.S. Marine, father of eight. He uses the iron palm technique, and he has dynamite in his hands. The cannon, however, has shown us that he does have a chin. And so far tonight at Slap Fight Championship Rising, we have seen the cannon's team from Tennessee dominate. Fantastic performances. And now the cannon has a lot of pressure to deliver here. His 60 second break has lapsed and now he's back to the barrel. Here we are in the bottom of round one. The cannon winding One, up. Two, three, oh! Oh! Shemokin oh, Thunderclap! Oh, Holy smokes! Shemokin Thunderclap staggers back no. three or four feet. Doesn't quite leave his feet, but he does give props and kudos to the cannon. I've never really seen anyone react to being slapped the way that Shemokin Thunderclap reacts. It's almost as if he gets a little bit of pleasure from it. Here we go. In fact, I've heard him say that multiple times. He's already made his way back to the barrel. 
This is a 10 round scheduled fight. We are at the top of round two. Shimokin checking One, his placement. Two, three, and another oh. fantastic slap from Shimokin. Oh my. The cannon might be in trouble. Shimokin Thunderclap is a powerhouse slapper. Ranked in the top 10 pound for pound on the planet. The cannon is looking for an upset tonight. It will be an uphill battle for the cannon. He's having a very serious conversation with his corner man. And it looks like he may step back to the barrel. So far, we have the beginnings of an incredible main event. Look at the face of Shimokin Thunderclap. He is ready to throw down. The cannon seems a little hesitant to step back to the barrel, but again, it could just be that he's using his 60 second break. And here he is, we are in round three. Pardon me, round two, bottom of round two. Shemokin Thunderclap goes down hard. He's having a hard time getting back to his feet. Referee Kyron Bowen taking a good look at him. The doctor has come. The doctor is near the platform. Oh my gosh, this fight could be over. Shemokin Thunderclap having a conversation with the medical team. Okay, the medical medical team, they asked uh, what happened. Shimokin said, well, he knocked me down. Let's go. Shimokin's going to stumble back to the barrel. And it looks like we're going to go right into round three. Let's go. Let's go. Shimokin is definitely hurt, and that makes him even more dangerous. Top of round three. Here's the windup. Oh, no. Okay, that looked like that might have been a violation. And the sports slap officials are taking a look at it here. Okay, they may let this slide. It did look like a clubbing. All right, we're gonna roll right into the bottom of round three. Okay, it looks like after reviewing the replay, that was a clubbing violation by Shimokin Thunderclap. They're going to issue a warning for clubbing. Okay. Again, that's just a warning. If Shimokin clubs again during this match, he will lose a turn, and that would not be good. I have to admit, the cannon is shocking everyone in the room. He was a clear underdog when we booked this fight. If the cannon were able to pull off this victory, it would be one of the biggest upsets we have seen this year. And it will be the first win for the cannon who has one, had some bad luck in his career. Two, three, oh my go. God, the cannon drops Shimokin. Oh, Shimokin goes down hard. Cornerman tells him to stay down for a moment. The medical team's coming back onto the platform. Shimokin says he's okay. I believe that. Tough, tough guy. He's been through a lot in his life. Many, many more battles, much tougher than what he's dealing with now. I have no doubt that he'll stand up and try to compete. I'll be curious to see if he still has his legs. Okay, maybe he does. Oh, maybe he doesn't. Lead official Kyron Bowen, sponsored by Sangamon Watches. Shimokin Thunderclap, deliberating with his corner man. Shimokin taking advantage of his entire break. Shimokin Thunderclap back to the barrel. 
We are at the top of the fourth round. Shimokin has been knocked down twice. One more knockdown, and he will lose by TKO. Four, two, three, yeah! And a good shot by Shimokin Thunderclap, but it looked like it could have been just a little bit low, and it looks like lead official Kyron Bowen is going to call a clubbing violation on Shimokin, and that is unfortunate. That's the second violation, which means Shimokin Thunderclap will now lose his fifth round slap, and that is devastating. You can see it on his face now. I'll be honest with you, I, I believe this is, yep, this is the end of the match. You can't blame Shimokin Thunderclap for throwing in the towel here. Probably a wise move. And ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible upset. The Cannon defeats Shimokin Thunderclap by TKO after two knockdowns in four rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the Cannon. Wow. What an incredible main event. I am almost speechless. The Cannon has shocked everyone and proven himself as one of the top middleweights at Slap Fight Championship. Let's take a look at the replay. I was really excited for my rematch. My team brought the heat, and I felt like I had to pick it up a little bit, so I came in strong, and I got the win, and I'm super excited for it. It's my first one, and I'm ready to go some more. That's about it, see ya. Well, fight fans, that does it for Slap Fight Championship rising. Another incredible event is in the books and we want to thank you for tuning in this evening and thanks for all of your support over the years. Your messages, comments, and subscriptions have helped Slap Fight Championship to become the top slap organization on the planet. But we are not finished yet. We have some exciting announcements to make over the course of the next few weeks, so don't forget to like and subscribe to Slap Fight Championship on all social media. We want to congratulate all of tonight's winners and a heartfelt thank you to all of tonight's sponsors. House of Gain Supplements, Sin City Sublimation, Impact Mouthguards, 
Davy Jones Brandon, Zeus Energy Drinks, and of course, our regulators at Sports Lab USA. My name is JT Tilly, and you've been watching Slap Fight. There is only one. <laughs>